He is famous for writing probably the greatest underground book in human history, and that is The Secret Teachings of All Ages. It is uh -huh. a massive encyclopedia of the occult, esoterica, symbolism, came out in 1928. And I have a new book out called The Seeker's Guide to the Secret Teachings of All Ages, where I explore some of Manley's themes. But it is a book that you, you will lose yourself in and you will find yourself in. People open that book and they find a path in life. It's just endless in its possibilities. Is it an instructional manual, basically? It's, it's not really an instructional manual, but it's a catalog. It's a beautifully it's a beautifully curated catalog of esoteric and occult traditions from all throughout the ages. And you open this book and you find chapters on tarot, on Pythagorean mathematics, on Atlantis, on e Egyptian mystery sure. traditions, and you find yourself in it. You find something you gravitate towards. He had an effect on some well-known people. Uh, and we're going to go through some of these names and I want you to explain what kind of indelible effect he had on their lives. The first, of course, the late President Ronald Reagan. That's right. I've been writing about this for 10 years. I found evidence that Reagan and Hall were not only acquainted, but Reagan was using certain of Hall's phrases and ideas and terminology in his speeches. Wow. Yeah, going back wow. to the 1950s, the very dawn of Reagan's political career, well, up through his presidency. Well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, exactly. And I did a text analysis. I've written about this in the Washington Post and a lot of other places. There's no question about it. Reagan was borrowing ideas from Manley P. Hall. Somebody who I would never thought would have had some of Manley P. Hall's ideas, the late Osama bin Laden. Can you believe it? Yeah. Uh, there, How was that discovered? Military intelligence after bin Laden was killed found a copy of the secret teachings of all ages on bin Laden's bookshelf. Wow. And you would ask yourself, what is this book doing there on bin Laden's bookshelf? You know, bin Laden and his movement harbor a lot of conspiracy theories about Freemasonry and different mm -hmm. secret societies. And they think there are these hidden hands that are kind of pulling the strings in the world. And Manley wrote about some of that in The Secret Teachings of All Ages, but not in a negative way, not in the way that Osama bin Laden might have understood it. He saw Freemasonry, for example, as an organization that believed in principles of individual liberty, ecumenism, religious freedom, and did believe, I think correctly, that Masonry played a core role in the founding of our nation, but not in a negative way, not in the way that bin Laden would have interpreted it. Right, exactly. What did he say about secret societies? You know, his secret society thesis is really, really fascinating. Manley took a basically positive view of secret societies like the Freemasons. Unlike and, now, where everybody thinks there's something negative going everybody on. Everybody thinks there's something negative, but I would say take a second look, take a second look. Groups like Freemasonry, the Rosicrucians, the Historic Illuminati, all these groups revolved around the idea that the individual spiritual search was the birthright of all people. They wanted to separate power from the aristocracy. They wanted a separation of church and state. They believed that the individual had a birthright to search according to his or her own lights. Manley believed that these secret societies vouchsafed ancient ideas and eventually helped bring them to light in the founding of the United States. It is a fact that an inordinate number of our founders, including Washington and Ben Franklin, sure. were Freemasons. Absolutely. And, and this runs throughout our history. Historians, mainstream historians, are only just now coming to recognize this. But Manley was writing about this in the early 20th century when it was not widely acknowledged.